So several people, as we've said, tried to warn British authorities about radical Islamist viewpoints from one of these suspects, a man who law enforcement admits was on their radar. So here now, senior fellow at the London Center for Policy Research, Lieutenant Colonel Sha Tony Schaefer, and Brad Thor, former member of Homeland Security's analytic red cell unit. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Uh, 20,000 jihadists on the streets of the United Kingdom. Um, I, how many of those would you imagine have call phone calls from the imam and two different friends and neighbors reporting them, and that is not followed up on. Tony. Well, uh, look, I'd say that there's probably a pretty good percentage, and I think the British are probably going through right now combing all the records and trying to figure out who else has been reported. Uh, let's be clear on this, Martha. They've talked about quote unquote networks, multiple networks. This man was part of a network. This network was reported and ignored. Uh, and this, as Peter King just said, there is a pattern of this both there and here. So I think you're talking about two to three percent of those that group which probably have uh, on their mind doing something active. And, and if you're talking about thousands of people, that's still a pretty big number. But it's not it's not infinite. And the, the reason that they're not, that we saw this failure again, is you have the same people in charge. Theresa May was the former Foreign Service, uh, the internal uh, uh, secretary during the, during the last four years, it's because of she and other people who have, have set up policies for this system to fail. So if you have a system that's set up to fail, you have people reporting and no follow-up, you're going to see more of this. Yeah, I mean, Brad, it, it it's so disappointing to hear that these reports were made. And, you know, often I think Muslim communities are criticized for not doing enough to put up a red flag or to turn someone in if they if they have a concern. So here you have an imam and neighbors doing exactly what they're supposed to do. And yep. yet they're now frustrated because no one listened to them. Well, and you know who's also frustrated, Martha? Law enforcement, because the bar is so high to prosecute these guys. We have zero tolerance when it comes to child pornography. Why don't we have zero tolerance when it comes to radical Islamic ideology? If you go watch these videos or you go listen to hate sermons like uh, Anwar Awaki, then you ought to automatically, that ought to be a prosecutable offense. And if you even let one of these guys sleep on your couch when he's planning one of these attacks, we ought to be able to lock you up for not years, but decades. We need to lower the prosecution bar and make it much easier to close cases and lock these people up because as Congressman King said we're seeing the same pattern again and again and again they get on FBI radar or over at MI5 MI6 wherever they are in the world and then they close the cases on them so yeah. let's make it easier to prosecute not harder and these events Tony have to be very empowering this is the third one right. since March so you know they're looking at this and saying this, this is working pretty well you know you can jump in your van and, and you've got your knives and you get out and you're gonna terrify people all over this city on a regular basis there's no downside that's right so as as was just alluded to by Brad look uh, we've done this before also uh, during the old days during the Cold War if you were supporting the Russians or if you were a communist you weren't going to be getting any slack you would be locked up locked up so we've done this before also if you remember Martha right after 9-11 uh, there we did not have any uh, major terror attacks in the United States it's not that they didn't try we had very severe very effective methodologies intelligence methodologies working with law enforcement and special operations to help do some very severe things. I don't want to get into details for obvious things. I'm sure Brad's aware of some of them. But the idea is we've done this before. It's not an issue of can. It's an issue of political will. And everything it, it, we've seen has been bad. I, I want to ask you a quick question uh, to both of you. Just a few seconds left. This decision uh, for Qatar to be cut out of the Gulf states um, conglomerate, uh, is it because they're too cozy with Iran? Is it because they're fostering terrorism uh, more than these other countries would like them, like to see? Brad quickly and then and then uh, over to I think there's I think there's a lot of both going on Martha and yeah. I think any movement to address terrorism in that part of the world is a good thing however this shakes out Tony. Yeah. Now, look, uh, Qatar has been playing both sides of the fence. So is the Saudi Arabian. So mm -hmm. I'm not sure who the good guys and bad guys are here. We have our largest base in Qatar. Something we have to take very seriously, though. So our next guest, thank you very much, gentlemen. Good to see you tonight.